Hello. Can you hear me? Do you have a button? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay, good. Uh, I'm Barbara Johnson. I'm from Bedford Public Library, Texas. And I'm going to talk to you about some things we've done with our OPAC and our staff clients. I think we're ready now. Uh, so I'm just going to talk to you about some things we've done with our OPAC and our staff clients. Uh, just a few things about Bedford that might be different from other sites. We're a single site library, um, smallish, me smallish to medium sized population. Um, and so that might differ from some things if you're in a consortium and um, things that you might do uh, different from us. And some of our goals uh, that we always try to keep in mind are just the visual appeal of what we're presenting to the patron. We always want it to be easy to navigate. Um, we focus on a large, easy to read font. Uh, we incorporate plenty of white space. We really focus on our cover images and we really want to uh, do anything we can to increase uh, staff efficiency. So just you know, my process, it's not really a process, it's just kind of things I do and think about. I'm always looking at other library catalogs. I've probably looked at most everybody's catalog in this room to get ideas. Um, I've tried to learn as much CSS and jQuery as I can so that I can incorporate that. Of course, the jQuery wiki is a wonderful uh, site. And I use the, um, they may be different in the different browsers you use, but in Chrome, I use the inspect elements and the page source to get behind things and see how things are working and we have a test server so I do try and uh, you know verify and test my code um, keep backups always and then when I get figured out I use our support vendor so I'm just going to start with uh, some catalog enhancements we recently redid our home page and we were having some issues with the sort of three column design. So we've moved from having content in the OPAC now 
bottom and right, and we've moved everything to the main user block. And we decided we wanted our cover image scroll to span the whole page, and we reorganized our links a little bit, um, and we feel like it's improved our display on phones. So it's, you may not be able to see it real well, um, but that's the design we came up with, with the scroll all the way across and then our link below. And so when you're on a phone, uh, those boxes below um, stack and display real nicely. And then I'll just go into some of the things. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is just give you an image of some stuff we've done, and then I'll give you a little bit why we did it and um, the code behind it, but I'm not really gonna go into the, uh, the depth of the code. It's just there so you'll know what I used to, to do it. So um, we wanted to shorten the login to my account, save space. Um, it just seemed like it didn't need to be that long. Um, and so we shortened that up and that's, um, you have to use some jQuery to do that. And there's the code that I'm not really gonna go into. <laughs> uh, we also decided to um, display only the first name of the patron when they're logged in. As you can see, I have a very long name in my patron record. So instead of displaying all of that, we're just uh, using the first name. And again, it basically safe space, it's a little cleaner look. And it may have some improvement on privacy if you were in the building looking up on your account, perhaps. One thing I'm always big about is um, reducing the number of clicks or the need to mouth to where you want to go. So. Um, we want to always put our cursor, have it automatically in the search box so that we just can start typing, put in our title, and go. We incorporated um, an item type limiter drop down so that patrons can limit what they're searching without having to find the advanced search or even know what you can do with an advanced search. We tried to customize our cover images. We used Syndetic for our images. Um, we made them larger. Uh, we made them hopefully clearer. We're using some jQuery that takes the Syndetic's um, small size image and swaps the medium size image out for it so the resolution is much nicer. And there's several things that kind of go into that. So there's two, two screens of code here, I think. And we always think that the larger um, image sizes help market your collection. And there's the rest of it. And then on the details page, we're actually using a rather large um, image um, just again, to let the patron see the whole thing and not have to squint for a little teeny image that they can't really see the details on. We've also used placeholder images um, and we've, we've moved our images over to the left-hand side. I, to me, I think that's a little bit more of the standard you see when you're out on, on even retail websites, you, you know, on Amazon, you see your, your images over on that side. And to um, prevent the content from sort of shifting back and across a page when you don't have an image, we've got this um, placeholder image so it aligns the, the bibliographic content so that it um, flows a little bit better on the page. And, um, for DVD titles, um, we're actually using, um, we've got the title and we were using the statement of responsibility um, after our, um, all of our bibs. But for DVDs, that content can be really long 
and it you know it can list every screenwriter and producer and director and whatnot and we don't really think our patrons care about that information at least not on the results page they just want to see the title and get the dvd so we've got some uh jquery that will remove that to provide you with a, a little bit cleaner look so you're just seeing the title you're not seeing the rest of that stuff that that clutters up the screen And we're also using uh, some jQuery to remove the uh, trailing slash that you see when you're not using um, the statement of responsibility. Things will end with that trailing slash. And uh, that just bothers our staff and we don't want to see it. So we removed it. Um, when the um, Page numbers were added like this. We decided to um, highlight the first and last uh, buttons. Um, front desk staff said they were having a hard time just kind of focusing in on where they were and they would often click the last button instead of the next button. And so we just made add a little color there to hopefully make it easier um, to find that. Uh, we decided to reorder the facets just a little bit. For us, we thought that um, the item types and the locations were some of the things that patrons wanted to limit by. And so we wanted to bring that further up in the list. For us, our locations are our specific shelving locations. And so that if they limit by the specific shelving locations, um, they can get closer to where they need to be in the library and focus on just that um, section that they want to. We added a date range filter on the results display. And one thing I probably should have said in the very beginning is I did not create all of this myself. I have taken it from multiple sources. Uh, Bywater has helped me. I've looked at code that other libraries have used. I think I found this one on the Portsmouth, New Hampshire site and I thought this is fabulous. Let's put a date filter right on this page so that you could limit your results and, and you can do that on the advanced but I don't think most patrons are going to know to go there. And it's very long code and it's very small and you can't see it but if you look at it later <laughs> you'll be able to get it. Uh, we did make two um, specific changes uh, that we had Bywater make it to the XSLT. Our patrons wanted to be able to see the series title on the results page. Um, they were missing it. They, it was there on the uh, details, but for them, they wanted to be able to scroll through results and see the series. And, and if it has series numbering, see the number of where that falls in the series. And the second one we did is they specifically wanted to know about ratings for DVDs. And so we incorporated that one in. And those were small, um, small um, enhancements that we paid for uh, and buy water did for us. We added a temporary hours or you could use it for news, whatever you want. We weren't real taken with the um, I'm not sure what that is, but it's the news option that you can use um, because it only displayed on the front page. We were having a little bit of a hard time formatting it the way we really liked. And we were wanting whatever we use to match more closely to what is on our main library website. So this is what we came up with. Um, it's temporary, so I can put it in and take it out when this is done and it will display on every page. So this is actually a results page and it will stay there. It will be, if you're logged in as a, a patron, you're on your patron account, it will be at the top. So it will always be there. And then when this event is over, I basically go in and just remove it. And the section highlighted in red is the text. All you would really need to do is just change out that text for Thanksgiving, for Christmas and so on. When we incorporated the um, OverDrive uh, integration 
and you have to log in to overdrive um, I just wanted the cursor to be right there instead of having to put my mouse in that box. So we've got some jQuery that will do that. And when you're logged into your patron account, we thought it would serve the patron better to have their fines sorted um, by the most recent fines. So we've sorted it by date um, descending so that they can see those first and not have to scroll. So now I'll talk about some things on the staff side. We've done a lot of things where we've just highlighted the color of a button just to uh, catch the staff member's eye um, and they'll just more readily see maybe the things that they use the most. So here with a, um, a patron record, um, we've highlighted the ad child, the search to hold, and the add a message because those are the things that uh, staff use the most. Um, we do have trouble with phone number format. On the self-registration page, we've got some uh, jQuery going on that will automatically format the phone numbers, uh, or at least the telephone number. I'm not sure it does the text number. Uh, but when, pay, when staff are doing a patron um, from scratch, um, we told them, please do it in this format. But so we put little hints in there, you know, on the phone, you need the dashes, on the text number, please don't put them in. We loved this feature. I don't remember which release it came out in, but this has helped staff so much to have the um, separation of the types of materials that they have checked out. But when it came out, it was all in one long line, and that was a little bit difficult for uh, staff to really kind of dissect between the sections. And so we've got some jQuery that makes it display in this way, and we're more, it's more easy to look at and um, you know, see which section and the numbers that pertain. Um, this was a recent one where I heard staff um, complaining about the difficulty on this screen that there were, let's see, there's one, there's actually four date columns on this particular screen. And they were telling me, I really only need to see, you know, the checked out on and the return date. Those are the two dates I wanna see when I'm helping a patron. So we just went in and put some background color uh, behind those and so now they, their eye is drawn a little bit better to the um, dates that they need to consult. Um, I'm always sort of bothered by data that's there that I just don't want to see. And I don't want to see 11.59 p.m. And it, it used to be 23.59 p.m. Now 11.59 p.m. on the um, date due. I don't need it. I, I don't care, so I don't want to look at it. So there's just a little bit of code to remove that. Um, when you're, we did this actually on both sides, on the patron side and on the staff side. Um, we had that payment thanks, and when we were on the staff side, we kind of couldn't understand why it was thanking us. <laughs> so we didn't really want to see it. And then a lot of our, it's possible we didn't have it configured right, but we were having a lot of this sort of um, repetitious, either maybe it's the code and then it all spelled out, I'm not quite sure, but we wanted to see it in a, in a better format. And so we used some code to clean that up and, and there's less to look at, less to focus on. And then this is the, uh, holds awaiting pickup and it would always just go to the holds waiting 227 holds waiting which we don't need but we do need to see the holds that are over so staff can go and pull those so we have it now defaulting so when you go to that particular um, link it will automatically go to the the holds over uh, this is holds to pull 
And again, we use shelving, um, the location for us is the specific shelving location. So that might differ from, from some other uh, libraries, but we wanted to see it uh, sorted alphabetically so that we weren't running back and forth across the library pulling items. So at least this way things are grouped together and you can go to a section and pull all those and then go across the library and pull whatever else you need. Um, I've put in several, we've done this on several different um, themes where usually it defaults to showing you 20. And of course you can change that, to, I guess it's 50 and all and whatnot. But for some of them, I just wanted it to show everything. I didn't want to have to page through. I didn't want to have to click the um, other option of how many to show. And so we've got some stuff in there that will just default it to when I bring this up, show me everything. And sometimes um, it can be good because once everything is shown, I can sort it and it's dealing with all the data. And I can also do a control F if I can't find it on the screen, then I've got everything displayed and I'm not trying to find it on screen after screen after screen and I still you know, can't come up with it. So I highlighted the, um, that one was for the borrower account. So if you wanted to do this on some other screen, you would just substitute out um, the screen you're looking at and hopefully it would work. <laughs> and this is just another example. We did it on the whole history. Um, and so um, this is just showing for this patron all 96 holds of their whole history. And so now I'm gonna look at um, some things we did in the, the cataloging and acquisition side. Again, I'm a big fan of having cursor in box. So if I'm cataloging, I want it there and I wanna be able to type. And once I've saved my bib record and I'm now ready to, um, you know, I've added my item and maybe I'm ready to do another search, I can just type. I don't have to move my cursor to the box. I can just type and bring up my next title. And we added some paging to the bottom of the cataloging results page. It just duplicates what's at the top, but it brings it down and, and puts it at the bottom. So if you're at the bottom, you don't have to scroll up to the top to move forward. A few more highlighting of our most used buttons. Um, the saved catalog and the macros are the things that when we're cataloging, we just use those the most. So we gave them some color. Now on the staff side, I wanted to improve the display of images for staff just as much as I wanted to improve the images on the patron side. So different source of images, these are the Amazon images on the staff side, but where we enlarged it a great deal so that staff can see the image better. And then on the details page, we have it really quite large so that they can really see it you know, sometimes there's something on that cover that, um, you know, the patron recognizes, the staff recognizes. It just really helps you, you know, zero in on what you're dealing with. Um, for acquisitions, we are uh, emphasizing hold when we're receiving. Uh, for us, if anything has a hold, once it's received, it goes to the front of the line. So we move all, all items with holds, get sort of a priority in the cataloging queue. And um, our staff member, it was hard to always see that. You would just miss it. So we gave it some color so it was easy for her to see that and pull those and move them on. And then this one is in the received titles. Um, we highlighted the received so that when we scroll through that page, the red shows us very easily that, you know, that one's come and I can sort of focus on the ones that haven't. This one, we just changed out the labels on the um, receiving a shipment. It said shipping costs and something else 
and fund, and we just change it to processing costs because we don't pay shipping, but we do pay, uh, pay processing, and that's where we put that information. And then we just changed, shortened it to fund. I can't remember what it said, but um, we're just using the one word now. Another example of putting the cursor right where I want it to be, if I'm creating a basket, I most likely want to start typing in the basket field. So I want the cursor there. More highlighting um, in the basket, either the editing, editing of the basket or the closing of the basket. And this was an example of displaying all of something over on the acquisition side. We're displaying all titles ordered within a fund. Um, and so they are, they are all listed there. And display all titles in a basket, another example. And then patron suggestions, um, we generally, when we um, respond to the patron, we generally are using that um, others reason, which gives you the text box and you can put whatever you want in there. But staff generally wanted to put more than was actually viewable in that box. And so we found a way to enlarge the box and um, now they can put it in there and they don't have to scroll back and forth and they can't quite see it and they've got plenty of space there for, for their, their reason to show up. And I think that's it. So if anybody has any questions. I probably, maybe some, but not all. No, I did not. So I probably should. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. We have not done any accessibility on the OPAC side. Uh, on the staff side, we're, since we're a single location, we're fairly small. And so the people that are using it, it works for them. And we just basically went with, uh, you know, green was sort of a positive or add kind of thing. And maybe red was more of a, you're getting rid of it or it's a problem or that kind of thing. It really hasn't. And I can see where us being a single site, that might work fine. And if you were in a consortium or something, that might not work at all. But you could also maybe change it to, I think there's an option of 50. So you maybe could change it instead of showing 20 per page, maybe you could just change it to 50 and you get a little bit more if that was of interest. Yes. Uh, copyright year, I'm pretty sure, is what it's doing. Okay. You know, I'm not really sure. That is one I did find on another uh, partner site, and um, the code is very long, and I'm not sure I completely understand all the code, but it seemed to work, so I said, let's do it. <laughs> Well, I thank you for uh, allowing me to present. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, my email 
contact information was at the end, so please contact me. We've got about half an hour until the round table. I think they're still going in the other room, but um, they're going to do the door prize drawings before the APIs start. But until then, we've got some free time.